Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at a tool called Deep Motion Animate 3D. Now this is currently in really early alpha, so do expect some bugs, hiccups, and so on, but the bright side of that is it's also currently free. Now there is going to be eventually some pricing changes, we'll get back to those details in a little while, but if you want to check this one out, you can head over to deepmotion.com and register with a valid email address completely free. So what we are looking at today is Animate 3D Cloud. Now essentially what this allows you to do is upload a clip of video, and it will do its best using machine learning and, uh, you know, web-powered godliness to turn that uh, clip into a 3D animation. There's a number of tools out there that do this, and uh, yeah, let's see how well it does. So you see here at the start, you have two options. You can go default, and you can use their own built-in characters, or you can do custom, in which you can upload your own FBX character in a T-pose that it will then apply the animations to. I have tried both, and I will sum it up this way. Custom sucks. <laughs> So we're gonna go with default for now. For some reason, whenever I use custom, the animations came out really, really janky, and I, I can't really tell you why. Uh, but I'll show you that later on. I'll, I'll show you the result of using custom. The process is basically the same. The only difference is you upload an FBX file as well. So what you're going to want to do is upload a video clip. I have a couple for us to check out here. Uh, the first one here, I pulled off of YouTube's. I cut it down so you have just the image in place. This one is pretty much ideally set up. I will show you the channel I pulled this from. You had to crop it down so you got just the image you want, but one test alone isn't enough. So I grabbed, is it Kata? Anyways, a guy doing a karate kata uh, or routine, whatever, uh, as another example pulled off of YouTube. And then finally, we have Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee is going to do some... Bruce Lee-ish stuff. Now this was, I took this one because it's a real world clip with bad lighting and also poor contrast. So we're gonna see how it does. And truth of the matter is picking Bruce Lee was probably a bad idea uh, simply because he, he's fast. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna give the algorithm some challenge. So anyways, once you pick out the clip to start with, such as, here we go, Femwalk. All right, then you get a list of options here. You've got uh, the FBX reducer, yes or no. This is gonna cut down on the number of keyframes, but your end product needs to be able to do interpolation between keyframes. Chances are, just keep it as it is for now. The key one you're going to wanna to set is physics filter. This one sets up joint limits and, pre and uh, removes self-penetration. Yeah, that one sounds dirtier than it is, but you really wanna turn that one on. Otherwise, you'll run up with that the hands clipping through the body all the time. And then once you're set, you basically just go ahead and do create animation. This doesn't take too long, so I'll let it run in the background so you get an idea of how long this process takes, and we'll go through some of the requirements. So your camera should be stationary and parallel to your subject. Your character should be 6 to 20 feet away from the camera with head to toe visible. Uh, the lighting should be neutral with high contrast between the subject and the background. The size of the video should be less than 60 seconds and at max 50 megabytes. Occlusion should not occur, so there should be nothing in between the person and the camera. And then clothing, uh, do not wear loose clothing or clothing that covers key joints like knees and elbows. And I violate that uh, with the guy wearing the gi. Uh, so that one obviously covers the joints there. That's why I said that the woman's one should ideally be perfect because she's wearing a set of shorts. Uh, you can see the, uh, the ankles and the knees and so on required. Uh, so those are your... Uh, your best result requirements. As you saw, we, we uploaded the Bruce Lee one, which uh, does not have good contrast. Placement is probably a little off. The lighting is kind of crap. Uh, and he's wearing clothing that covers his ankles and feet. So we're gonna see how well it does with the bad video too. So here we go, it's uploaded now. Uh, at any particular time, you can go ahead and download these results. I'll show you that in just a second. But first, we're gonna look at the preview that it generates for you. Uh, you have the option of focusing it in so you don't see the original source here. And here we go. So there you can see the original and then the generated animation. Now, one thing you will find is the hands look silly. Well, that's simply because, quite frankly, the uh, hands and, and toes, fingers and toes are not modeled. So if your model has fingers and toes, they're gonna be standing there doing something awkward. But here you can see, pretty reasonable. Now, where it kind of falls apart, and, and I found this pretty consistently, is straight on. Every single time, there's been this off-axis jankiness to the run. Now, again, this is a 2.10 alpha, so hopefully this improves in time. But for coming from a single source, it did a pretty good job. You can take this into your animation tool of choice and clean it up pretty easily. But ideally, they get this off-axis tilt improved, and then this will be much more useful. Again, pretty early on, and it's machine learning, so the more that it gets fed, hopefully the better it gets. You got a number of different skeletons available here. So you can check out like a man, a rather large man. Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to be. I 
think that's supposed to be a child. So you got a number of their default characters built in here. And then once you've got your results here, you can go ahead and download your animation set here. You can see you can either bring it as, uh, what is that, BioVision or a BVH file, which is just straight motion data, or you can export it as an FBX with the, uh, the model attached. If you want to apply this to your own model after the fact, just export that out to Blender, Max, or Maya, delete the mesh, reattach it, and you should be able to use it on your own animation at this point. So you can bring your results out as either BVH or FBX. Uh, so that is one result. Now you'll notice I've done a number of these things. So we're gonna head over here to my library and you can see some of the previous versions I have done. By the way, you can see here, even after 10 animations, I'm only using up nine or almost 10 megabytes in total size and a one minute 34 versus of animation. Now I mentioned earlier on about the Kata one, uh, the karate moves, so let's see how that one did. So let's go ahead and load one I've already created up. Uh, exact same process in this particular case. I uh, used a different video, obviously. And here you can see the end result. And again, it's pretty good. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, though, is, well, for some reason, that kick didn't, didn't go all kicky. And the other thing is there's an instability. And I don't understand. If you look at him, he is pretty solid in this form where she is getting jiggy and i don't i don't know why it would do that you would think it would actually be the opposite that that uh, it would it would default to a stability and not an insta unstable like this and then unfortunately once again that center axis is a little bit like you saw that the leg the wobbling of the leg so there's definitely this is looking like if you look at it from side on this looks like a, a She's rather intoxicated. So there's, there's a little bit of joint stability they need to work on. And again, anytime they go down the center axis, it seems to be a little bit off. And that's a common trend we've got. So let's go back to the library. We're gonna look now at the, um, the Bruce Lee. And this one uses a 3D model. And uh, like I said, when you use your own 3D model, this is a model from um, Mixamo. Uh, the model results are, uh, oh, what was the word I wanted? Bad. Uh, so here we can see, Again, the hands look awkward. There is without the uh, self-penetration prevention on. You can see the hands go right through. But this is this is just bad. Now, this is bad on a couple of levels. This is bad on the level that uh, Bruce Lee was a bad source. There was bad contrast there. Uh, at the same time, he also has a lot of snap motions, and it does a bad job with that. And then whenever you apply a 3D model of your own type, I just found the results didn't look good. So let's do it. Here's the... Uh, the karate one, again, with the same model applied. Ooh, that's the first time I've gotten that. It seems like I can ignore it, though. All right, here we go. And you're gonna see it looks, it looks bad. And I, I don't understand how the same thing with just a different model changes so much, but whenever you use your own model, the end results they end up looking really like a bad marionette. You also see the hands here. Uh, yeah, the fingers look ridiculous when they're not they're not meshed. So if you're going to send up a mesh, do one without a rigging for the fingers because otherwise they end up splayed and they look really silly. Uh, but that is kind of the results that you're getting from Deep Motion right now. And the only other example I've got here, I forget if this is a, a larger man. All right, now it's going to want me to... I think I need to do a browser refresh to get rid of that. Um, this is a larger man walking angry. Uh, and here is the end results we got from it. Ba -ba -ba -bom. Gone. Uh, another interesting thing to point out is they're also going to have their own library of 3D models coming at some point in the future. Uh, so hopefully they'll just have more options and, and you can check it out that way. So here again, with a model applied, you can see it just looks, it looks janky. And then once again, down the center line, it, it doesn't get... So there was the original. I, I also should have cropped this out, so it may have confused it because it had two access points to work from. It's it's not terrible from the side, but again, whenever I apply it to my own model, it ends up looking a little odd. So it, it can't take advantage of the two viewports. If you're going to send up a source, you ideally want to send it up a single version. In this case, it was smart enough to pick just one of the two. I'm judging from the way that the animation comes through. It matches his arm movement here pretty well. So I'm guessing that's the one that it ultimately used, not that one. But even then, you can sort of see like this leg is off. So it, there's just something with the center line of axis on almost all of these uh, just seems to be a little bit off. And if they fix that, these results are definitely workable. Uh, and, and again, this is early on. Uh, apparently, this was created using Unity because that's what the error message is showing us. Uh, here we go. One last time to the original. That 
is pretty close. And we were getting there. And if that was all that it was, and this straight on view wasn't like just leaning to the side, this would legit be a useful way to create um, motion capture style rigs without needing all of the fancy setups and rigs and multi-camera settings and so on. Now, what I would find interesting is if they offered the ability to actually provide two axes of input, so you could add a front and a side. I can imagine their algorithm could do so much more with that. And then you could do much better results. So I, I would hope that that's something they add in the future to give you actually, you can provide multiple points of view to the algorithm and it can figure it out. But I gotta say, it's done a pretty good job of extrapolating uh, the back legs or the things that are hidden. It's pretty consistent to the uh, original model. So there's definitely some interest here. So as I mentioned earlier on, uh, pricing on this one is going to change as it's going forward. This is from uh, a Reddit post. Unfortunately, if you go to the website, there is no information at all on pricing. Uh, so what you're seeing here is the service is unlimited. This is the creator, by the way, is unlimited through the end of the year. If you join now, once we switch over to our payment model, your account will stay free and you'll have a number of free animation minutes that reset every month. Uh, higher pay plans give you more minutes. So there's still going to be a free approach and you're going to get multiple minutes of data is what, the way they're wording it right now. And if we go back once again to my library, you will see all of these different animations put together still are less than one minute, 34 seconds. And if you look at their example, obviously they, they set it up under their criteria and to ideal settings that are for them. But as you can see, they've, they can get better results than I did. Also, they're using their own model, and I would highly recommend that because, uh, again, when you, you upload your own, at least at this point in time, it's a little bit janky. Uh, but the other thing you'll notice here where it's doing quite well is where the model starts facing straight on. They're not doing that side profile like I did with a lot of my videos, and that side profile is where the algorithm seems to get stupid about leaning off axis. So obviously this, this demo is showcasing it in its best light, and it's sort of a straight on view. But it's definitely an interesting process, especially if you are crap at animating. It gives you a baseline or a way to start to work from, uh, and it's interesting to see where this ultimately turns out. It's cool, again, if you sign up now, you can get it uh, for free. Also, by the way, if you were looking for some animations to start with, uh, one of the things I could recommend here is endless reference. Now, the problem with this is going to be that you're getting a front view and a side view, and I think these ones with the grids are going to be somewhat useless, but there's some really interesting animations here. So if you want, for example, a side view of a man vaulting, you got nice high contrast, nice stable lighting. It's about the distance away that you wanna be. So I will link this in the link article down below. So if you're looking for a source of um, animations to try, uh, this is a pretty good site. All I did is I load them into a video editor, cropped out part of it so that I only had the side view. Uh, I used one of these. I didn't use that one because it's ridiculous. But there's a decent number of animations to start from. So if you're looking to play around with this and you're looking for something to work from, the endless reference site over on YouTube seems to be a pretty good choice. Uh, so I, I got definitely different uh, quality out of different videos. Um, and again, unfortunately, my experience going with the uh, custom version here uh, was a little problematic. But if you want to come in, it's pretty straightforward. All you're doing basically different is you're uploading a character as well. I've already actually uploaded that guy. So then what we can do is basically come in, you pick that character, and then otherwise the process is exactly the same. So when you're done this, it will then be applied to your T-posed skeleton uh, as opposed to uh, the ones that they built in. But I find providing your own skeleton, it ends up looking pretty bad at this point in time. So you're probably better off using their own and then taking the BVH file into your uh, tool of choice and applying the animations that way. All right, so that's it. Uh, that is uh, Deep Motion Animate 3D. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, it's early on, it's alpha, it's machine learning, so this is going to hopefully improve over time. Uh, but what did you think of the tentative results that you're seeing right now? Uh, let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.